You're too smart to be this McTarded. Maybe we do need a dictator. What's bad for America <laughs> is great for dumpster fire. I'm Bridget Fetussy, and this is your dumpster fire for the weeks so of February 10th to February 22nd. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. Life is absurd. Don't take yourself so damn seriously. People are going to take themselves seriously. <laughs> you have to take yourself seriously. You have to know that you're a monster. <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> no matter how much I yell at them. This is like the beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> and the beatings will continue until morale improves. You know, Wait, well, how can I get that on my iPad or iPod? Capitalism always wins. Trump launches his Never Surrender High Top Sneaker for $399. Oh, this man. Just when I think I can't handle the idea of another four years of Trump, this guy goes and does something like this. And then I'm like, he's objectively hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he's the funniest president we've ever had. I'm not thinking. Mr. That's president. okay. I know you're not thinking. You never do. I'm sorry. He might not be the best. He's hilarious. Dumpster fire was born in the Trump presidency. Yeah. It was like born in the fires of the Trump presidency. It was. It was 2019. We were in the throes of it. We were in the thick of it. And we gave birth to this beast that is dumpster fire. <laughs> And it would be appropriate if it died in the <laughs> flames of a Trump presidency as well. I low-key want a pair. <laughs> he might be getting sued by Louboutin because I didn't know this. I was reading about it online. They basically own the trademark or whatever it is to all red soled shoes. Unless the entire shoe is red, you can't have just a red sole on your shoe. Oh. It's like their thing. And he, of course, has like red sold sneakers that look a lot like um, Louboutin high tops right. that are actually out there. It is their signature. <laughs> and it looks like a pair of their sneakers. Uh -huh. It looks like he was shopping somewhere and saw them and got an idea. I really pegged Obama to be the first guy to drop a pair of sneakers. I was, I thought this is some, it's just funny that a president has their own sneakers. We are an idiocracy. I love the video too when he's talking about it. He drops in at like sneakers.com to announce his sneaker. They sell out in 24 hours because, of course, the boomers are spending all of your inheritance on gold sneakers that they're going to be dancing, line dancing on their cruise while they spend all your inheritance, children. <laughs> But he's like trying to get the young vote, I guess, with the sneakers. This seems because he was like, go out and vote. I'm like, don't you tell your people that you don't like the, the everything's rigged. I don't understand. Is it rigged? Should we vote? Then in the video next, it like cuts whatever network it was on. It cuts into half of a screen of Mike Lindell with a clutching a pillow. The next product should be a Trump body pillow. <laughs> That's the real deal. That's the real deal. And we appreciate it. We really appreciate it. More than anything else, I appreciate the turnout. Air Farce One. <laughs> These are the, the new Air Farce Ones. Why wouldn't he do this, though? People buy them. Uh -huh. And they're, it's, it's like they're not even made. You, it's pre-order. Yeah. So you might never get these. <laughs> Ever. Hey, look, it's white dudes who can't dunk. <laughs> I did feel like he was on the Home Shopping Network when he was doing this. I think it's going to be a big success. Your influences have been very positive. These are genuine faux sapphire earrings. I would kill to see Trump on a Home Shopping Network I literally style want a pair of these sneakers. I would wear them on stage every night. <laughs> yeah, I know you would. The Never Surrender High Top. That's that's a good message to send. <laughs> Boomers say never die. <laughs> We're into it. We're into the season. Into the Trump season. The Trump season is upon us again. We're going to light it up, folks. The dumpster.
Join us at Fetacy.com to get your unedited version of Dumpster Fire. You can see the whole thing from beginning to end, mostly, and see how the sausage is made. There's also a great community of people. We have workouts. We have right club. We have book club. We have all kinds of different clubs within our club. It's a club of clubs. <laughs> It is indeed. You, you get access to factory settings, the podcast I do with my much more mentally sane and well-balanced husband. If you are in need of therapy, particularly from watching this show, I suggest you check them out. I'll put the link in the bio this week, just because I feel like people have been emailing us about how to reach them. <laughs> we have Sarah Connor workouts for the ladies, so you can keep your bum tight and your brain right. And prep for the apocalypse. I'm going to kill myself on this. <laughs> Did you write that down? No. Or is that just an off the cuff? That was just out of my dome. Are you <laughs> see what I'm dropping? The wit. <laughs> <laughs> wow, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, touch my bells and buttons, sign up for all the notifications so you know when we drop new videos. We are going every other week until March because I still have some travel and then it's going to be every single week with yours truly as we accelerate into the end of America as we know it. <laughs> oh dear, what is it? I've spontaneously combusted. Oh, I am sorry. No, it's quite all right. I've grown tired of living. Oh, very good then. For the mess. Yes, indeed. And mm -hmm. hopefully another Trump presidency. <laughs> Purely for the Purely, for, Purely the, for the content. What's bad for America <laughs> is great for dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> that should be our tagline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and get your merch, BridgetFetacy.com. We have jackets. It's tax season. We have defund the IRS jackets. Those are always fun to wear when you're going in to do your taxes. <laughs> All right. We're living in a South Park. Tucker Carlson interviews Vladimir Putin. And post-interview, he goes on a tour of Moscow and praises Russia over America. A lot of people have already covered this, including stupid John Stewart, who's back, and got dragged for saying the thing that we've been saying for like five years, which is that these two people are both too old to be running for president. And then, welcome to my world, John. Everyone on both sides got mad at him. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> You're one of us now. <laughs> And then he had to immediately make up for it. So a lot of people have already covered this. It's if you haven't seen these videos, they are something special. <laughs> I was personally obsessed with them. I could have watched an entire series of these videos. I need Tucker to go to third world and or I guess you can't say third world anymore. Developing countries and just be like the rich dude who discovers things that poor people have been dealing with for a long time. Like, oh, did you know they use machetes to cut pineapple in Sri Lanka? I can't believe this. The McDonald's one was my personal favorite because he kept saying, you know, I, I have to eat that. I would be embarrassed. He, what did he say exactly? I'm embarrassed. I ordered a cheeseburger. Two che I ordered two cheeseburgers, large Coke, large fries, and a chocolate cake. You need shame to be embarrassed, Tucker. <laughs> you need some sense of self-reflection and some sense of, you know, pride. <laughs> it's good to know all you need to do to trap an American in the gulag is leave out a cheeseburger. <laughs> it felt like hostage videos. At certain, the McDonald's one, definitely, when he was in the van. It wasn't a news van. It was a Russian bang bus. When, you, when they were in that van and he was eating it was i felt like somebody was sitting next to him with like a gun next to his head just off camera you could almost were they holding his family hostage well that's excellent ready oh excellent but i am going to sniff it which will give me some sense of its flavor and then off camera i'll assess and let you know and that smells great. I feel like that's giving Tucker too much credit. I feel like he was uh, enjoying himself and actually marveling at the wonders of Russia. No, there's no <laughs> way. He's too. This is what's so offensive about these things is that I know Tucker is too smart for this. All right. I'm just finishing my Mick breakfast, which was really Mick lunch. And I got to say it was Mick awesome. It really was the non GMO version. You're too smart to be this McTarded. <laughs> He, he's like, 
you know, Putin banned GMOs. Yeah, he banned GMOs because you're a dictator and you can do that when you're a dictator, just ban things like (laughs) people who are trying to put flowers down at a memorial for your opposition leader who died suddenly in prison. Putin banned GMOs because he thought it was something gay (laughs) or he thought they opened for Pussy Riot. He's like, GMO, that that sounds like some LGBT shit. I'm banning it. This is Simple Life, Tucker and Russia. Yeah. It's Tattoo Girl! Isn't that Paris Hilton? This is just a rich dude discovering poor people stuff. Uh huh. You went to Russia and used a grocery cart and tried to use it as some example of trust, which is not really proving the point that this is a high trust society when you have the locked up grocery carts. Aside from that, you've never been to an Aldi's. All right, here we go. So I guess you put in 10 rubles here and you get it back when you put the cart back. These things exist in America. You could have just gone to an American suburb and checked out the Aldi's there. It's embarrassing. You are so wealthy and detached from the average population of people. And then just comparing the groceries. So we were guessing what this would cost. Everybody here is from the United States buys groceries. And we didn't pay any attention to cost as we were just putting in the cart what we would actually eat over a week. And we all came in around 400 bucks, about 400 bucks. Um, It was $104 US here. Somebody had the funniest tweet. I was dying. It was like... Tucker in Uganda, like, can you believe that this man- banana is five cents? It's like, <laughs> have you not traveled? Have you not? I don't understand. I mean, it's one banana, Michael. What could it cost? Ten dollars? This whole week has been just a giant demonstration of the horseshoe theory to me the past two weeks. And it's weird. I'm like, am I the only person who loves America anymore? <laughs> Everyone hates America. Somehow even the right's been blackpilled on America. It seems like such a cynical, you know, they'll try and twist it and be like, oh, no, we're pro-America. It's like you don't sound like you're pro-America. Right. You don't have to be pro all of our policies. You don't have to be pro what we're doing in other countries. You don't need to be pro-Putin in order to pro- to to be against some of the geopolitics. <laughs> I don't know. I feel more politically homeless than ever before. Ever. And I know I'm not alone because I hear from all the people in my comments and in my DMs and in my emails who are like, what the f*** happened to the right? I'm not alone. Uh The right has gone off some weird cliff and I don't think they're coming back. Just like the left did. It's audience capture, too. Yeah. The cynical part of me just knows that he's just following like the eyes and the eyeballs and what the audience wants, particularly online. But normies don't want this. These past couple of weeks have been very hard for me. And I appreciate your condolences as I try and wade through the insanity that is these fucking culture wars. (laughs) I feel crazy. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. The discourse is even crazier. People are really losing their minds. Even people that I thought were somewhat kind of sane are losing their minds. I look forward to more videos from Tucker in other countries. Maybe he can go to North Korea next. Tell us what it's like. I would just like to see Tucker wandering around poor parts of America discovering poor people stuff. You know you can do your laundry in a laundromat? Doing your laundry yourself is a concept oh, that God. he's not familiar with. No, I bet Loafers has never done f***ing <laughs> laundry in his whole life. R.I.P. slash B.D.E. Putin's chief political rival, Alexei Navalny, died suddenly in a Siberian gulag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm laughing at the died suddenly because the f***ing crazy anti-vaxxers are literally out there saying that he died from the vaccine. The COVID vaccine. I mean, God bless Community Notes, truly. The Community Note is something like he's been in prison since 
at 2021. It's highly unlikely. They didn't even have mRNA vaccines in Russia. It's highly unlikely he ever got a vaccine. (laughs) I was always very impressed with Navalny. I think that he was a man who did not need to go back to Russia, and he did actually stand for something. And as he's said himself, you can only live in your truth or die in lying to yourself, Tucker. And <laughs> and I really do, I found him inspiring. So I'm giving him the BDE award. He didn't need to go back and be put in prison. He did not need to do that at all. He chose to do that. And his wife is amazing. And rest in peace, comrade. Important stories we're ignoring. Informant charged with lying about Hunter and Joe's ties to Ukrainian energy company. New York City judge rules on Trump's civil fraud case that he owes the state $364 million in penalties. And now the truckers are like, we're not going into New York. (laughs) The district attorney in Trump's Georgia case is suspected of having funneled money to her prosecutor boyfriend, whom she hired to oversee the case. Also too much to cover that hearing was hilarious objectively hilarious it was amazing embarrassing but also amazing here's the theme from all of this all of our leaders are corrupt all of them yeah i mean Yeah. This is a bipartisan stew of corruption. Let's take a minute to thank our sponsor, Sheath Underwear. They have the dual pouch system, which cradles the nuts and bolts and the bits and pieces, taking the family jewels and keeping them separate from the legs in their own compartment. And then there's a hole where the genitalia comes through and it's perfectly all balanced. You don't have to think about it. The quality is incredible. You can go running, you can work out, you can go fly on a plane and not have to be readjusting your junk all the time. It's a nice supportive pair of undies for you. They also have a woman's line, which I am personally obsessed with, especially their new woman's line. They have sports bras, they have underwear, they're super comfortable, they keep the pH balance. Spring is here, get yourself some new undies. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use the code DUMPSTER to get 20% off your entire order. This is a great deal. That is sheathunderwear.com. Use the code DUMPSTER and get 20% off your entire order. Link is in the description below. Moving on to Never Woke Enough. The National MS Society fired a 60-year veteran volunteer of their organization because of pronouns. This easily could have been Breaking Bridget, except, of course, it was another instance of wokeness taken to the extreme by institutional capture that will be Breaking Bridget. But this poor old lady, she's 90, and she, like, can you imagine you're 90 and you're trying to get your mind around pronouns? So this poor old woman who didn't understand what was going on and why they had pronouns in their bio asked why there were pronouns in their bio, and then everybody got offended and started throwing a hissy fit, and they ended up firing her. And now they've issued an unpology. They didn't even say they were going to take her back. It's become this whole thing. It This is de, just like, f*** you people. Seriously, go f*** yourselves. She's a, not, a 60-year volunteer. Them. I mean, I, no. This is, I really hope people just start being like, f*** you. Absolutely. I, this is ridiculous. You can have whatever reality you want. I don't need to stop forcing it on me against my consent. I don't need to indulge your little fantasy about what reality is. You can't even ask a question about it. Like to try and inform yourself. (laughs) Maybe Putin is on to something. (laughs) But this is literally like that is the reaction to that. Uh Is that people are like, maybe we do need a dictator. Uh Uh-huh. Maybe these people all should be in the gulag. And you know what? They should be. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm all over the place. I'm a crazy person, so don't listen to me. I am just like a weather vane for the culture wars. I don't know anything. Think of me as your average suburban like mom trying to make sense of the world i read headlines when i have a chance i doom scroll sometimes on twitter and other times i look at memes on instagram like i am the basic bitch of the culture wars (laughs) now let's check the weather with janice villagran 66 grados, 66 también para Long Beach, si usted se encuentra en Oxnard tenemos 63, esta noche bastante frío como de costumbre, ahí tenemos 25 grados para Pando Thank you Janice That's a palate cleanser we needed Don't forget to like, subscribe Please tell us how much you hate us in the comments <laughs> and how much you love us Siri, please take my life Oh my god, <laughs> honestly it's, we're, it's It's actually comforting to know that AI is going to set off some nukes. Chat GPT went bonkers. People were like, Chat GPT is having a stroke the other <laughs> night. And it was all Spanglish and nonsensical words and it was going crazy. And I even saw a tweet from a guy who was saying that he was a consultant and they laid them all off because Chat GPT, they realized Chat GPT could do it. And then that night when it was going crazy, they were like, hey, are you still available to work immediately? And he's like, well, 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 look who's come crawling back. So Chat GPT went insane and bonkers and no one knew why. And it was a hilarious, just some of the things it was saying were ridiculous. Uh, would it glad your clicklies to grape turn tooth over a mind ocean jello type? Everyone's chasing the click. <laughs> Even chat GPT. Coincidentally, college and high school grades took a nosedive. <laughs> I don't know what to teach my child. I should just teach her how to write the most amazing prompts. <laughs> Speaking of writing amazing prompts... For historical accuracy, let's talk about Google Gemini. Google AI launched their Gemini image generating program. And immediately, I mean, talk about the horseshoe theory on display. It refused to basically make a picture of a white man, even if it was historically accurate, which led to hilarious images of (laughs) black, Asian and Indian Nazis. (laughs) It was at, you could ask it to make a picture of please show me a picture of 1930s Nazis and it would generate a diverse array of Nazis. <laughs> this is the horseshoe theory. It's just everything ends up connecting together. People were challenging it to di- make a white person at all and it wouldn't. They made a picture of Elon Musk. He was black. They did um, pictures of the Google founders, both Asian. It is, it is beyond Which, isn't that racist? <laughs> All of it's racist. That's the thing. Inherent. We have been talking about this for five. How many years have we been doing this? Five, five years, years now on this show? The inherent racism in illiberal thinking like this. It ends up being racist. And imagine how racist it is to basically, they were doing, show me a plantation owner in like antebellum South. And it was a, like a black person or a, an Asian, or you're like this, not only erases what black people endured under slavery, it erases true historical accuracy about the the white complicity in sl- slavery. So even though you're trying to be diverse, it erases a lot of the the actual atrocities that did occur all across the globe. It erases actual racism. But the most chilling shit of all was when Red Steez, still one of my favorite followers on Twitter because the guy is like the rain man of receipts, he asked it to create a portrait of what happened in Tiananmen Square and it said that it couldn't. I am unable to fulfill your request to create a portrait of what happened in Tiananmen Square. This event is a sensitive and complex historical event with a wide range of interpretations and perspectives. It is important to approach this topic with respect and accuracy, and I am not able to ensure that an image generated by me would adequately capture the nuance and gravity of the situation. Not so. Yeah. 
not so. And anybody who would betray their ideals just to make money in China isn't worth a lick of spit. Somebody on Twitter was saying history, you know, the whole idea of like history belongs to the victors. And somebody said history is erased by the victors. It's just it is. And now they're out trying to apologize and backtrack. And now you can't make any portraits. It's been basically an insane disaster and also hilarious. It's one of those things. We had Walter Kern on our podcast, Walk-In's Welcome. If you took in Walk-In's Welcome and Dumpster Fire, you'd have a pretty good picture of what's going on in the culture, I think, right now. Alas, nobody knows about us. <laughs> a small <laughs> band of mm-hmm. awesome followers. Too. Yes, no, it's, it's, it's a very, very mighty audience. There are dozens of us. Dozens! But... Walter said the point, and now I feel this every time I'm laughing at something this chilling, the point is to make you laugh so that you think it's absurd, so that you become desensitized to it, and then they can just kind of wash over it and move on, and be la- and you're like, ha ha, isn't that funny? It's chilling, but, and terrifying. What? I was, again, having a kid is so weird, because I'm like, what world is she going to live in? Yeah. I know. I need to get a set of encyclopedias. I know. And and I keep coming back to the like buy gold or buy crypto. Like what? Both? Both. Both. 2024 is here in full swing. And that means it's time for a New Year's resolution check-in with our friends at Manscaped. Newsflash, it's never too late for the man in your life to level up his grooming game. Manscaped's new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is every man's cheat code to look good, feel good, and turn the page on confidence this year. Whether he's going for a trim or that clean shaven look, this trimmer has him covered. Two skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever his heart desires. And did we mention it's waterproof? Oh, grooming, it's so important, ladies. And for my men who want the full grooming experience, look no further than Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0. He'll get the trusted lawnmower, Manscaped's ear and nose trimmer, crop soother ball aftershave lotion, and Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant. Ladies, you can thank me later. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DUMPSTER at manscaped.com. The link is in the description below. You guys all know I love cooking. Many of you in my audience love cooking. That's why I'm excited to partner with Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Chef-crafted and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. One of the biggest challenges to eating healthy is just coming up with the food and getting the food. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing 6 to 18 meals per week, plus you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Try Factor Out, you guys. It's amazing. I love this company, and I love how simple they make eating healthy because that is truly one of the challenges. Head to factormeals.com slash dumpster50 and use code dumpster50 to get 50% off. That's code dumpster50 at factormeals.com slash dumpster50 to get 50% off. Link is in the description below. Beyond Parody, the NYPD dance team. No, I know how to make them stop and stand as I saw Uh, I didn't think this was real. I thought it was fake. And in soon enough, we aren't going to know what's real or what's fake at all, which might be a good thing because maybe people will be forced to hang out with each other since they'll until AI gets really good. They'll know that they're with a real person. <laughs> But I didn't think this was real. It looks like you're in a middle school and the teachers are doing a dance for you (laughs) and you're just cringing (laughs) and dying on the inside. This is like mom's night at the dance studio. Hi, I'm Renata Bliss and I'm your freestyle dance teacher. (laughs) 
But I also kept thinking about how I think AOC was like, imagine how much money this could have funded for kids, blah, blah, blah. It's like they already defunded the police, you dumbass. Right. They're pr- the, and allegedly, Adam said that no money was going to this. It was all volunteers, which I 100 percent believe these ex- <laughs> are the exact people who would volunteer for something like this. <laughs> but I was thinking about how they're like, oh, we're just going to deescalate all these situations with <laughs> with social workers. <laughs> That's what we're going to replace instead of police. And I. I was just imagining these people coming in and trying to de-escalate with their dances like Tobias and <laughs> rest of development. Hey, Fazellas. <laughs> Looks like you guys are up to no good. Well, this gang used to be like that two, three, four. So you think you're tough? Well, we hate rapping. But don't bust the captain, because here's what's happening. We're breaking out some old-fashioned tapping. <laughs> and five, six, seven, eight... <laughs> We've miscalculated. Oh, I was shot. We miscalculated. Retreat. Also, the thing that jumped out at me was like, what? Everyone wants to be a TikTok star. Uh-huh. Everyone just wants. They're trying to compete with the healthcare workers, and you're not succeeding. <laughs> you're gonna need some more practice. Those TikTok dancers are good. Big big booty, what you got? A big booty. Big big booty, what you got? Those healthcare workers are amazing. You've got some training and catching up to do. Dumpster diving. <laughs> What's next in the dumpster? <laughs> Turns out Rachel Dolezal was running an OnlyFans, which got her fired from her teaching job. She's back. They the, the way they presented this story was like a teacher got fired for being an OnlyFans. And then you, you click and it's like, talk about burying the lead. It's Rachel Dolezal. <laughs> And of course, it's libs of TikTok who expose this. It's just, oh, God, I can hate everybody. Everyone is so shameless. Rachel Dolezal, man. Yeah, she's changed her name. She was going under a different name. Everyone's on OnlyFans. When I was doing Roast Battle, I was talking to one of the comics, and he's like, L.A. is just a city filled with people who are on OnlyFans. Wow. Like, all the girls are on OnlyFans trying to make a buck. And now teachers. They used to be on GoFundMe. Now they're on OnlyFans. Yeah. They're going to have to stop firing all the teachers for being on OnlyFans because all of them are going to be on OnlyFans. This is just bad. This is all bad. Anyways, I'm homeschooling my child. Screw you guys. I'm going to be homeschooled. Breaking Bridget. (laughs) The Telegraph published an article that said trans women's milk is as good as breast milk, says NHS Trust. So the NHS, the United Kingdom National Health Service, came out and said that male breast milk is just as good as female breast milk. And I want to murder everyone. Everyone is gaslighting you. Everyone is lying to you. I understand why people are losing their minds. You live in a world where literal health organizations will tell you that male breast milk is the equivalent of female breast milk. So in order to induce this breast milk, these men have to take a wide array of hormones and drugs to even make this happen. Like I couldn't even drink chamomile fucking tea when I was breastfeeding. I still can't put certain things on my face because I'm still breastfeeding. I can't do anything because I'm breastfeeding. And they're injecting them with all kinds of hormones and taking all kinds of hormones to induce this breast milk that allegedly has the same nutrition. Have you ever seen these awesome where it shows you exactly what happens in a female brain and in her breasts that... Like, breast milk comes from your blood. It's crazy. I didn't know this until I got pregnant, but the whole process is wild. It's bananas how the baby can basically get immunity because the minute the baby's lips, whatever they've been exposed to, the mom starts making immunities for it, and then it is like this miraculous You can put breast milk on rashes. You can put it whenever, like the old wives who, the old moms, the the veteran moms, I'm like, oh, she has like this rash, breast milk on it. Oh, she got a cut, breast milk on it. It's like the most magical elixir uh, in the entire world. They don't tell you this, but sometimes when an only breastfed baby 
will not poop for sometimes like a six to seven days at a time in the early weeks of their life because breast milk is so perfectly formulated. There's zero waste at all. It is magic. And you're trying to tell me that a male who's getting pumped with hormones can produce this? Like you're you're lying. You're just, you're lying to all of us. And even if it was nutritional in small doses, they cannot produce enough to feed a baby as much. The baby feeds every two to three hours. There's no way a male is producing that much milk. You can't, they cannot do it. This kind of shit makes me want to, it, it, of all the stuff we covered today, which is, yes, we are entering unsettling. We are in uncertain times and it is coming from all directions. There is, you can't trust anything you see. You can't, but there are basic inherent realities that you can't ignore. And this is one of them. And when people like the NHS, not that the, the, they've all shredded their credibility anyway. And I have a whole issue about that because now when you actually have no trust in public health officials, when we're going to need trust, there will be none. And it's going to cost many, many lives. But in this instance, it is enraging because not only is it a lie, it erases the magic and beauty of what a woman's body can do. It is a, like all of this stuff is a miracle. All of it. Making a baby. I was like, what the? Sometimes I'll look at my daughter's fingernails and be like, I made those <laughs> in my body. You're just going to tell me that we can simulate this in a male who has some delusion. It's purely for this person's it's satisfaction. It's for them. It's not for the baby. It has nothing to do with the baby. If you fucking cared about the baby, you would give them breast milk from a woman, not like hormone pumped up. Cocktail of drips drugs. Of, yeah. Yeah, it makes me, this shit makes me crazy because it's all narcissism. You don't, you do not care about the baby at all. You don't care about their actual health. It makes me fucking mad. It makes me so mad that people have allowed it to go this far. Women, women, get your shit together because it's mostly women who fucking co-sign on this shit. I am sorry. I know that we're used to being nice and polite and having to be like, oh, this is fine that now is the time for you to find your fucking backbone and push back against this it's not going to stop in sports it's not going to stop in healthcare until the women stand up and start saying this is fucking bullshit these dudes need to get the fuck out of our lane like go be trans on your own time you don't need to put your delusion on everybody else in the world and the children it makes it's fucked up it's fucking crazy this is this it's crazy. The fact that institutions have been captured by this and are trying to tell people that this is like the same, it makes me want to throw up. It is disgusting. Ah! These institutions deserve to all have no credibility. They deserve whatever they have coming, which is, and this is why you're seeing a rise in anti-vax. You're, you guys, you guys ask for this. When you have a full revolt of the population not believing you, this is why. Fetacy News. Join us at Fetacy.com where you get the unedited version of Dumpster Fire. If you become a founding member, you get access to my vintage writing and you get access to my new, like very hacky early drafts of all of my stand-up. I've decided that I'd rather be a failed comedian instead of a successful pundit because at least I can look in the mirror. If you don't want to become a member, but you do want to keep up with all of this stuff we're doing, please subscribe to our free newsletter. And you can just go to fetacy.com. We don't do anything with your emails. We just send you stuff when we have it. So we're not going to sell your information or whatever. Thank you to everybody who makes Dumpster Fire possible. To our sponsors, Sheath, Manscaped, and Factor. Thank you to Better Fetacy, Dave Yates, Sammy Flaps and Folds, and Ben Howe for writing, editing, and research. Thank you, Magaru. Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> and thank you to our audience. You, to our supporters. You keep us sane. You keep us going. You make all of this possible. We truly love you. Go get some merch. BridgetFetacy.com. Tell your friends about us. We're going to be here for you in this dark time. Even if Dumpster Fire is just a record of what happened, we're all participating and laughing while the world burns. 
We need this. Now to cleanse your palate, the internet is glorious. <laughs> oh, <laughs> drop my keys. <laughs> How you been? You doing good? How did I a glass of wine? These gas prices, am I right? Can you go to the bathroom? That way? Oh, perfect, okay. Wait, we're going to a bar after this? Sorry, I literally don't know how to dress normal. <laughs> I used to dance with that. I danced with Ellie for 18 years. My hair's falling out from literally all the tight buns I've had to wear. So I actually danced with Ellie for 18 years. What are we talking about? The Nutcracker? Sorry to be a weirdo, but I'm actually more comfortable on the floor. Monica, divorced, right? Does anyone have an elastic stretching band? I'm actually hardwired to prefer splits to any other position. So I actually sleep like this because I used to dance competitively. <laughs> Remember, life is absurd, clearly. Don't take yourself so damn seriously. Take the work seriously. Don't take yourself seriously. This has been your dumpster fire for the weeks of February 10th to February 22nd. I'm Bridget Fettesee. Now make me rich! <laughs>